Hello, my name is Paul LaViolette. I'm a scientist and author, and I'm director of the Starburst Foundation, a nonprofit research institute based in New York. I would like to ask your help to crowdfund this novel project to build and test the Nausicaa Superconducting Thruster Version 2. This is a device that was invented by Dr. Nausicaa, former professor at the Technological Educational Institute of Thessaly in Greece. It is a conical superconducting coil that has the ability to lift masses many times its own weight with no need of rocket propellant. It requires only a very minimal amount of input power when it is first energized. It is what may be termed a reactionless thruster. These are devices which, unlike a rocket, have the ability to produce a forward-directed propulsive force with no need to deliver a backward reactive force. In effect, they are able to independently accelerate forward relative to their local space frame without jettisoning backward any propellant. NASA uses reactionless thrusters to orient the space station and space telescope and one of their laboratories is currently testing a reactionless thruster called the Q-thruster, or M-drive, to determine its suitability as a propulsion motor for missions to Mars and beyond. But like the ion thruster technology that NASA currently uses for deep space missions, existing reactionless thrusters develop relatively small propulsive forces and require substantial amounts of energy. The Nasika's thruster that we intend to build and test would develop a thrust over 100,000 times greater than NASA's ion thruster for the same thruster system weight. This should be enough to get heavy payloads off the ground. We expect that it should have this ability because electromagnetic coils made from superconducting wire are able to carry enormous currents and create very intense magnetic fields. Electrical engineers who work with superconducting coils have long known that the interaction of the coil's magnetic field with its own current produces very strong forces called Lorentz forces, so strong that they have to specially reinforce some coils so that their forces don't rip them apart. Now Dr. Nasikas has found a way to design a coil so that due to its unique geometry, it constructively uses its Lorentz forces to propel it through space. Vector analysis has shown that conically shaped coils should generate a residual Lorentz force interaction which should be directed along the coil's axis towards its narrower end, and that this should be able to propel the coil as a whole upward. No one has yet wound a conical high-temperature superconducting coil of similar design, one that would allow the production of a large axial Lorentz force. The nature and strength of this propulsive force may seem exotic, but it is not hypothetical. Dr. Nasikas has invented and tested an earlier reactionless propulsion thruster design, which consists of a high-temperature superconductor nozzle casting with a permanent magnet fixed within its throat. The thruster has been shown to propel itself due to its ability to develop unbalanced Meissner effect forces, such as those used to levitate maglev trains. Tests have shown that it is able to produce a propulsive force of a few grams for a thruster weight of just 118 grams. While this may seem like a small amount, the device's thrust-to-weight ratio is nevertheless over a thousand times greater than that of the ion thruster NASA currently uses to propel its Dawn spacecraft to the asteroid belt. Dr. Nosikas has performed many tests and demonstrations on his superconducting thruster version 1. In this video of a test demonstration on this early prototype, you can see the thruster repeatedly deflecting to the left. While it returns to center, it never swings to the right. This off-center propulsion is due to the reactionless thrust being generated by the conical superconductor. Even though the thruster applies a constant propulsive force to the pendulum, its lateral momentum causes the pendulum to overshoot its equilibrium angle, thus causing it to oscillate around this off-plumb equilibrium. If placed in space, free of any restrictions, the thruster should continuously accelerate. 
This pendulum test footage that we repeat here was from a demonstration performed at Athens University in front of five physicists. They all agreed that the thruster was producing a force that caused the pendulum to oscillate. As the suspended superconductor warmed up above its critical temperature and gradually lost its superconducting state, the pendulum oscillation diminished and finally the pendulum hung motionless in a plumb position. Here is another test conducted at the Technological Educational Institute of Thessaly in Larissa, Greece, in which the thruster plus its cooling reservoir was suspended in pendulum fashion. It is shown to develop an off-plumb propulsion to the left. Tests such as these, conducted here, were viewed by Skype connection by two Cambridge University physicists one of whom is a Nobel laureate. They both agreed that the thruster was developing a puzzling thrust directed towards its narrow end. Here Dr. Nasikas is seen removing the magnet from its thruster, placing the superconductor casting in its cooling bath, and suspending the bath as before. Without its magnet, no unbalanced Meissner forces can be produced, and as a result, it hangs motionless. This shows that the thrust is only produced by the superconductor-magnet combination and not by extraneous winds or outgassing from the suspended bath. Last year, Dr. Nasikas received a U.S. patent on this version. This successful proof of concept supports our belief that the second version of the Nasikas thruster, which developed significantly more thrust, should also work as predicted. Of course, the greater complexity of this second version comes at a relatively high cost. Its estimated construction cost is $25,600, with another $6,000 being required to measure its thrust while cooled in a liquid nitrogen bath. The coil is to be manufactured by the same company that made the superconducting electromagnets for CERN's Large Hadron Collider. This same manufacturer has performed computer simulations on our coil design, which indicate that it should be able to produce enough thrust to lift 150 pounds, with the coil in its doer weighing just 11 pounds. This indicates a thrust-to-weight ratio of over 13. This is nine times greater than that of the space shuttle main engine. In, with the space shuttle, the rocket fuel to get the space shuttle up there weighs 20 times what the space shuttle weighs. Now with the Nasika thruster, the thrusters required to lift the space shuttle would weigh only 5% of the weight of the space shuttle. So on the left is the way we, we were doing it, and most of the weight is in the, in the rockets to get up there. With the uh, Nasika thrusters, you could just put these in the uh, under wing here, and it would take off this way. And with just a slight increase of the weight, 5% of the total. Needless to say, if this technology is shown to work as predicted, it would completely transform the world. Imagine a world that allowed inexpensive trips to space without the use of rockets. Imagine a world that had planes that allowed people to fly safely and cheaply without using polluting jet engines. Imagine a world in which people could have their own flying vehicle, or maybe even a hoverboard like in the movie Back to the Future that could allow them to sail silently over the ground. Imagine a world where the air would become clean once again and prosperity would reach untold heights. For decades, we have dreamt of such a future. The technology presented in this video can make it a reality. And that's where you come in. 
We are turning to the public to help with the costs of developing and testing the Nasikas Thruster 2 prototype because we believe that this is a technology that will enormously benefit society. We want to give you the opportunity to turn these dreams of the future into today's reality. By crowdfunding this project, you'll be able to help us develop this thruster and demonstrate its levitation capabilities in an open, public manner. It is acknowledged that certain parties may regard such a technology as disruptive to the status quo, and would rather see it classified and buried from view. By pledging for this campaign, you can instead help us keep this revolutionary technology open and free. Thank you.